Now in this video, you want to introduce functions, right? Good. So you have here on the body, the function is a rule. Now this rule is, in terms of mathematics, right? It's a mathematical rule. Okay, this mathematical rule relates two things together. The first one is called the input, and then the second one is called the output. Great. Anyway, this input and output, in most cases, they are just real numbers. All right. So a function is a rule that, as I said, um, produces exactly one output for each input. So that rule, mathematical rule, as I said, it, it um, relates these two things together, an input and an output. So we can look at a function as a rule, all right, or as a relation between two things, an input and then an output. Or we can also look at it as a connection between those two things. Anyway, we will see how it connects the two things together. Good. And now, well, another thing we should notice here is that it is a rule that produces exactly one output for each input. That is, if you plug something in, it gives you exactly one output, right? Not more than one and not less than one, provided you plug something in. It gives us exactly one output for each input. Such rule is called a function. Great. Um, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. If we see, if you see an equation of this form, say y is x plus 2. Great. Now, this is, um, I can call this a function y. Okay, it's a function written in terms of x. Now, this y here is an output, and then this x here is an input. Anyway, we will see that real quick. Now, one first thing I want you to notice is that these two things, y and x, y and x here, they are variables, all right? And x there is called the independent variable, while y is called the dependent variable. Reason being that, when once we are given a value of x, right, we plug that in here, we can get a value for y. So that means that the values of y will be depending on that of x. Good. So let me just give you um, some values for an imp for the x, and then we'll use that to generate values for y. So create a table like this. Maybe let's not go far. Let's call this um, point negative one. Let's impute negative one. Let's impute zero, and then let's impute three. Good. Now the x here takes care of the input, all right? While the y here takes care of the output. So for each x in x, let's see what we get. When x is negative one, all we need to do is to plug negative one into the right hand side of this equation. Then we we'll plug in negative one here. That will be negative one plus two. Now when you add two with negative one, just like subtracting one from two, right? Good. Just do the arithmetic. All you get is one. So when you plug in negative 1 in place of x, you get 1 as a result. We plug in 0 in place of x here, we will get our y to be 2. So that tells us that the value or values of x are the input, while that of y are the output. Good. So if you just plug in 3, maybe you can do that, you're going to have just 5. Great. And then um, I can give you another example of a function. There are millions of them, all right? Let me just give you... Something here. Let's say this is x squared. Good. So this tells us that for any input x, the value of y will be the square of that. Okay? When you plug in something, you square that, and that will be your output. So if x is 2, if we say let x be 2, then that tells us that y will be just 4, right? Given that this is the function, okay, defined to be a square of any input. All right. So as I said earlier, now, when we want to talk about the output and the input, they are called variables. So let me... Um, this and that, they are collectively called variables, right? Okay, where they, the input here, 
Okay, what you impute in, you know, it changes with time. We imputed negative one. After some time, we imputed zero, and then we took three. So that is why we call it variable. It varies according to the um, the context. Okay, so the input there is called the independent variable. Independent. While the output could be noted as dependent variable. As I said earlier, the values of y depending on what we plug in. So we can call that dependent uh, dependent variable. Good. Okay, great. Now, considering this exactly one output, I would like to give you a function in which when we, give, when we plug in a single input, a, a single number, yeah, as a value of x, that's an input, it gives us more than one output. Such is not a function, right? An example is this. We have, suppose we have y squared is equal to x. Now, maybe it's similar to the previous example where we had y to be equal to x squared. But in this case, it's y squared is equal to x. Hmm. Well, let's think of an input. Let's say we impute 9, right? So in place of x, I'm going to plug in 9 right there. That means we're going to have y squared is 9. So to get the output, that is to get the value, the values in this case of y, we need to say the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides, right? Good. And since y is an unknown, that is a variable, and it's an unknown, the only thing is that it, can be, it changes, right? Good. So since y is, a, is an unknown, we'll have to take positive and negative square root of both sides, and that tells us that y will be positive and negative 3, or, sorry, positive or negative 3. Now, that means that when x is equal to 9, when x is 9 here, y will be positive or negative 3. Now, that contradicts something in this definition. We say that for each, um, that the function is a rule that produces exactly one output for each input. We imputed only 9, and it's given us more than one output. So this right here is not a function, right? Good. We have couple of couples of examples of um, equations that are not functions. Okay, great. Anyway, in our next video, I'll be giving you a more rigorous definition of function than this. Then we enter into the course proper. And um, I want you to note that this is why I'm using here. We can, in general, make use of this notation, f of x, right? Okay. Now, you will notice this in our next video when we talk about definition of functions, that f of x is equal to y. So that means in place of y, we can plug in f of x. This f of x is a standard notation. All it tells us is that this is a function written in terms of x, right? Where x is the independent variable, or you call it an input, while y is the output. Okay, great. All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.